Welcome back to the Black Rose PDX podcast. Today's guest is Justice Raji. You may know him from the Ask Your Old Head podcast or for the stuff that he does with the Portland Opportunities Industrialization Center, a.k.a. POIC. And we talk about a lot of stuff with Black Male Achievement and how he got started in podcasting and what it's like to be creative in multiple areas. And so without further ado, let's get it started. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm home, I'm safe. I have a decent quality internet, and my children are more or less happy. My, my partner is happy. Or you know, we're as positive as you can be given the circumstances. So I'm cool. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh for for me, I work from home, so not much has changed okay. from like the day to day stuff. It's just that I find myself right. in a lot more. Uh, a lot more meetings with people that don't necessarily have meetings online. <laughs> mm. It's so it's uh yeah. it's, so it's it's um I kind of get a kick out of it because it feel for me it feels like this is a this is a true test of like uh oh there you are. Uh, this is a this yeah. is a true test <laughs> yeah. of um of how well like technology is for us to like maintain yeah. our stuff. But it also reminds me of like remember when like the FaceTime first came out and like Skype came out and they they show those commercials of, you know, like the grandparents in like another country and then the family yeah, in like yeah. another country and everybody's <laughs> Skyping and having a great time using technology. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we're we're finally able to like, you know, make that make that come to life. I I would say it's um it's actually been, you know, I guess fortuitous for me, me and a couple of my partners have been having kind of like regular meetings via like Zoom, those like, you know, the Skypes and the, the Hangouts of the World yeah. type apps for the last year, um, which has raised everyone's fluency a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah. You know what I mean? Where I think in the past when I've, I mean, some of these things have been available for five years now, mm -hmm. six, you know, even longer. But when I've been like, hey, y'all want to do this? It's been like, ah, well, I don't know. And uh, can we just do a phone call? Can we just do this? And it's like, yeah, but it's different when we can see each other. Yeah. A little you know. bit different. You know, it's, <laughs> you know but, but also I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that in a lot of other spaces where I think using these tools would do better for serving people, yeah. that it will actually open the door to more everyday, more people that do service initiating with the people that they work with that hey this might be a way for us to stay connected when you know traffic's bad or you don't have a bus pass or i i don't have time or whatever's going on that may prevent people from connecting that they can at least get get some connection going with the what is it sight and sound you know yeah. just not the touch yep you so. know uh you know i think uh in a in the age of global warming it, it's good that there's not a lot of traffic <laughs> Yeah. You know, you know the air is going to be one side. You know the air is going to be a little cleaner. Smog level is going to be down. The particulate <laughs> level is going to be down. You know, so it, you it's know. Uh, you know the uh, you know the the ecology gods are on our side right now. <laughs> yeah, I've had a very. I actually had a whole thought last night about uh, Thanos and his and his snap <laughs> and and the. Uh, <laughs> And, and the side benefits of erasing the order of the universe or whatever he did. I can't remember off the yeah. top of my head right now. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, yeah, but the whales are back in the Hudson yep. and the, you know, the tree the trees are robust. You know what I'm saying? Like um, you know, I'm I'm wondering uh what things are gonna really be a sea change, you know, however long this ends up being that we have to operate in the in this immediate fashion. Um and changing people's expectations of how, you know, well, you know, maybe I could just be around my house more. You know, maybe yeah. maybe maybe they should open up some, you know, maybe it's not bad to have some sort of commercial place where I could do some work that's in walking distance as opposed to, you know, driving and you know, here and there and everywhere. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh my girlfriend, she um she works at 
a memory care unit in uh, I think West Lynn. And one of the things that uh, she was like complaining about is that she has to go into the office to do paperwork that should be that should be on a computer, but there it's actual paperwork. And so it's, oh, wow. and so it's like you know maybe it's maybe this is a sign that you guys need to modernize a little bit so that you know you don't get sick just because you gotta you gotta file some papers. Right, right. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, there's a lot of places where the um, the paperless revolution has not actually made it. Yes. Yes. Healthcare <laughs> is one of those things. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but you know, it's uh, I was really curious about sort of what got you going because um, you've been podcasting since what, like 2015. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so, so like, uh, what? Well. But, yeah, like what, like what kind of started you on this journey? Well, I would say, I mean, before I, I think like most people that make a podcast, before I made a podcast, I was a fan of listening to podcasts. Yeah. Um, uh, from mostly, I mean, I, get, I think I started with kind of sports and tech podcasts. So like the, uh, what is it, uh, Mac Break Weekly, um, the Bill Simmons uh, podcast, um, and then a couple other things started, you know, coming into Bomani Jones's show that he used to do. I guess I don't know if I count that. Totally the podcast, but I used to have to listen to it on the internet. Okay, um, yeah. So it was more or less, yeah, I would listen to it after the fact. So it was on it. It was, it was a podcast yeah. indeed. Um, so that part that I'm like, wow, this is a, this is a great tool. Um, I have a background. I used to, you know, I, I joking like say I was, I'm a retired rapper. That <laughs> <laughs> used to be my, uh, my first, one of my creative outlets, was, you know, rhyming and, and, you know, with that comes writing and thinking about stories and what have you. And so I guess the preamble or the prelude to me starting to work on the show I was doing is um, me and a good friend of mine for years through whether explicitly in our work, <clears throat> what we did for a living or just personally, we were concerned about self-development and change and like what it means to be a man as we understand it. And, um, you know, exploring manhood, but also, you know, more from the, I guess the perspective of how do we have a constructive conversation about how you grow up and how you change, how you become who you are, what are your influences, all those things. So we, you know, started traveling down different little roads of, of like, can we write a book about this? Can we do a blog about this? Can we do that thing about this? And I was like, well, you know, I would like to interview other men, <laughs> uh, and especially black men. Um, and make them, you know, sort of center them as an expert on certain aspects of their experience. Uh, and that that developed out of, for me, a concern that the experience that I have um, broadly with my community, not just with men, um, is not the common conversation I hear or I see other people highlighting about our community. Um, and so, I, but also I wanted to find a way to do that without necessarily... How do I say making like a podcast where I, I present a world where black men have no flaws or there's no errors or no, you know, I just wanted to try to frame a conversation around you know, values, around folks, personal experience, um, something that's really important to them and, 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 and hopefully create a space where if you don't have the regular access to, you know, a couple of black men or men of color talking to each other in a hopefully somewhat intimate fashion, hopefully, you know, that you would be able to tune into what I'm doing and have that little experience, right? And you go like, oh, wow, those brothers, they were talking about some, that was real interesting what they were talking about. That was right. They seem yeah. to know each other or, you know, whatever have you. So that's that's where it started. And that's, you know, that's how I got going. With, and I just had to figure out how to do it. Honestly, okay. like, I don't know what the tools are and, um, you know, What's the RSS feed? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, all the things. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, it's definitely gotten a lot easier um, yeah. to produce one. I mean, you can produce from from your phone now. You know, like it, it, yeah. it's so much easier. But, uh, but yeah, you know, it's so so once you kind of had that idea of like making a podcast and you settled on sort of the theme of it, uh, what was sort of the the barrier of entry that you saw uh, for really getting that first one done? Wow! Now, see that and that actually is an interesting part of the the story of even <laughs> how long the podcast exists. Because I, I would say, in reality, the podcast probably started in 2013, oh, dang. <laughs> 2014, in terms of like 
I should do this. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think the first barrier was just the, to a degree, most of the majority of the folks I've interviewed on my show are men that I know personally in some way or interacted with personally in some way, whether volunteering in the community here or I know them from another part of my life abroad or we met somewhere you know, and had a great conversation and they agreed to be on the show. Um, so to, a, you know, kind of mining my personal circle <laughs> and, getting, and getting people comfortable with the idea of me interviewing them and just, you know, this is just going to be a public presentation, which you, I discovered. I'm, I'm not sure how long, far along you are in the show, um, but, you know, people actually aren't used to being interviewed. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's a bit, and it's, there's a lot of anxiety. They're like, well, what are you, I mean, yeah. All right. You got to like know, talk and, them and, into like talking about themselves. <laughs> Yeah, like, no, oh, no, it's cool. Like, this is your moment. Like, right now, you can just go all in telling me about how great you, you know, maybe, yes. not, you know, maybe how great you are, but just about whatever you feel is honest. And, and so that, um, that was a barrier. And then for me, thematically, like, because the, the part of the show that I still am slow, slow rolling into is more shows where I'm just talking about something that's on my mind without a guest. Yeah. Um, because I've, I've wavered between how much of, you know, me just being a platform to share what I'm thinking I want to have versus I want to, you know, frame, you know, the, 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 the guests that I have and their stories. So, you know, but that, that additional thing of like getting my first couple of people to agree to let me interview them, you know, and then, and then actually doing the interview. And, and, and if you go way back to the first interviews, the interviews all were real fast, <laughs> like 15 minutes, 18 minutes. And it was a wrap. That wasn't really my goal. <laughs> like my goal was like a 30, 40 minute flowing conversation of something. At some point, you know, we get to a flow and we're just talking about things. But, uh, you know, the first couple of episodes was like, all right, how you feel about this? All right. Uh, next question. <laughs> next question. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining the podcast. Have a great one. You know, kind of deal. So. Oh, yeah. So you, you kind of you initially approached it more of like a journalist where you have yeah. like something that you want to, you have a couple of questions that you want to get answered in it. And it hasn't necessarily, well, I guess there was an agenda behind it, but not like yeah. a, but not like a malicious agenda. It's just, you had a plan. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's always been interesting because for me, I pride myself on not being a journalist. And so yeah. I just like, I know how to make a podcast and I know how to talk to people. <laughs> so I'm going to just get the yeah. people in the room, put a mic in front of them and we're just going to chat for a little bit. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, some I I even say different points is that you know my intent is for this to not be radio. Yeah, I guess so. In that sense of like, so um, you know, not lots of breathy. <laughs> you know, so um, when you first had this inspiration, what got into your mind? Like you know, to kind of <laughs> break out of that, but also you know, because and I was as I've been figuring this out and doing it, you know, people are like, oh, your podcast should be shouldn't be longer than this length, or you should be this size you should do that and i'm like well i just want everyone to kind of be their own thing but similar yeah you know what i'm saying so if i have a show that goes 90 minutes awesome <laughs> you know what i'm saying i listen I, I listen to two and three hour podcasts oh yeah uh-huh. like, like, like i'll tune right in which you know you ask most people to be like you gonna listen to something for three hours i'm like if they're talking about cool stuff yeah yeah i'll pause it come <laughs> back to it like yeah. you know uh yeah. Like the Breakfast Club, that's that's what like two hours. Uh, I listen to the Read, which is like it could be up to up to three or four hours. Um, you know, it it's content. I mean, it's stuff it's stuff that's entertaining, especially if there's a great guest or if there's a topic that you know you want to know about. You know, whether it's relevant or not. Like it, it's uh, you know that that's that's just kind of how people are consuming stuff now. Absolutely, absolutely, and I figured. And you know, a part of my motivation for the show is, you know, in 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 the creed that I, I feel, um, and I, and I guess some of the backdrop too. At the time, I thought of working on this when the Black Lives, the, you know, the police uh, murders yeah. <laughs> and killings of, yeah. of of young black, black men and other black people and other brown people, which is ongoing. The um, uh, Trayvon Martin. Uh, Ferguson, all these things were happening also, and I feel black media is a space where black people can find, and others too, yeah. you know, they can join the fun, 
but I find it, I think it's a space that we can find sort of therapeutic, you know, unintentional or intentional healing. So I, I, I don't think the, the, the grow of even a podcast like the read, because I remember that was fairly new. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. However many, I think it's like six, seven years ago now. Um, uh, Combat Jack, you know, recipes to Reggie Ose. Um, uh, some other, I don't know. You get to talking and you can't remember stuff. <laughs> other other podcasts that exist, I think it's good for our for I think it's good for people to hear voices that are speaking from you know their perspective in some sense. I mean, or at least close to even the sound of you know you know what black people tend to sound like. You know, what I mean, yeah. I think it can be a therapeutic space. So I think you know, in 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 terms of the media inputs that we allow into our lives. It's like if we could, if we encourage people, don't look at this terrible video and don't watch that. You know, uh, don't watch all the mores of the world. Then people are like, but I want to watch something and I want to listen to something, right? So you're like, well, listen to these podcasts. Like yeah. here's a whole slew of stories <laughs> from a different perspective. Some of them are just, some are just comedy. Some are just fun, and it's fun. These are the mural of the world. They're, you know, they're just fun for fun's sake. Yeah. And then there's some that might be serious and. The deep uh, Larry Wilmore's podcast I enjoy. Um, some other, so, uh, oh, uh, the Michelle Mission um, is one of my favorites actually right now, uh, which is the two brothers in every black movie ever. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, it's so it, it's like you know if you commute to work or you drive or whatever, you know if you're gonna spend 45 minutes, you can spend 45 minutes listening to some people from your community or at least in the broad sense talking about something interesting yeah and 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 that's really the thing because i feel like in in this day and age you know when i was growing up and like when you were growing up we had specific channels and specific radio stations you know and you knew where to go to like get the the content that you wanted but now it's kind of like the wild wild west where you got the internet you got you know all these different platforms you have netflix you have all this and so it's really hard it's really easy for like a an influential black voice to get drowned it out. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and just the barrier of entry for some of these, as you know, and like, as I know, it's just really hard to kind of get started and really maintain that sort of sustainability that, you know, you, you come out with a hundred episodes, but you're competing with, you know, Joe Blow down the street that got a thousand. <laughs> yeah. And so, it, <laughs> yeah. And so you know, and that's, you get killed with the ag girl. The, uh, right. They're doing the, uh, the, they do like thirty, you know, an episode every day, and you know they're like, I do nothing else but this. <laughs> I was like, oh man, like I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can keep up with your production level, but yeah, you know, it's a, and it's a challenge. It, it, in between there has been some obstacles. I've never, I guess, really wanted to stop doing the show, but trying to figure out. I mean, one, it's not really a financially viable vehicle for me right now in terms of in and of itself. Yeah. But, um, but also there's a lot of work I, I I was more focused on doing and creating than like trying to figure out how to make money or at least cover the cost it cost me <laughs> to do it. Um, yeah, it'll get there. I'm not not really fully terribly worried about that part. But um, it's I I think for some people as a creative endeavor they might be like, well, I'm gonna do a podcast because I'm gonna I'm gonna become famous. It's <laughs> like, well, it's like maybe maybe, uh, maybe it might become like you know. Slightly popular, <laughs> you might, be, you might, you might become well known amongst a pocket of people who come to know your show, possibly. But you know, I mean, it's it, it is definitely a um, uh, you know, it's hard to get an idea of like who's listening and how many and, and, and what have you. But I think you know, you stick with it and and you find your way. Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, you know, I play, I used to play football and. It's always that thing of like, you know, I played football for 12 years. I'm going to go pro. It's like, well, you might, you know, <laughs> or you might just go, this could be yeah, it. it just might just be it. That just might be it. Or, uh, um, you know, I have uh, I've had like a few like popular YouTube videos because I'm an animator mm-hmm. and it's like, oh. you know, I hit half a million views on, on YouTube and it's like, you know, I might be popping, but then, you know, you come out with another video and that might get like 12 views and then you're like, oh, Okay, uh, you know. I, I thought it was my moment. I thought it was my moment. Oh, every, every video is going to hit, yeah. uh, you know, at least, at least 700,000. At least, because I'm uh, going on that, I'm going through that with, like, TikTok now, where uh, 
a lot of like the animated stuff that I'm doing is like blowing up, but not because it's so inconsistent. And so, uh, and so it's just like you, after a while, you just have to go back to the basics and say like, Hey, I really enjoy these parts of it. And so I'm only doing it for this. If it blows up, so be it. If it doesn't, yeah. at least I had some stuff that did blow up, <laughs> you know, like it, you know, it, it you, right. you, you, you did have those moments. Yeah. There. You can't really control it. You know, you can really just control how you feel and like what you produce. Ah, so, um, you know, and I, I was actually, um, you know, so the other things that I do with the show, I do the audio and the recording side, and I'm, I'm due to sort of, I don't know, popular demand, maybe a strong word, but I'm going to start doing a little bit of video here and there, at least. I don't know. Okay. I, I didn't really want to become a video editor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I feel like... There's, for some folks who, and I, and I really work hard to try to get like uh, black people to to engage in podcasts, yeah, and in alternative media in general, right? Um, and and I just a lot of people like the video for like some people like to just have the even if it's just you sitting there talking, it just seems to be more comforting for them or more more cur- more interesting. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I'm at least have to explore you know this channel. Uh, but I also take, uh, you know, I'm a, I don't know, a hobbyist, amateur, working on it, some level of photographer, and I like taking pictures. So I, I tend to like to do my interviews in person if I can, so I can take some portraits of my guests. Oh, okay. You know, okay. And that is sort of the side piece that I also do with it, because I, you know, as much as the experience and the stories of, of black men, also, I like seeing people. You know, I like getting, I like taking pictures. I guess just any in any situation, but I also like to capture these moments of my guests and, and have that as something that, um, you know, I think adds to the story because you listen to the show a few times and you go and see on my website, on my blog, you know, Oh, this is what, that's what that guy looks like. You know, <laughs> if I see him somewhere or he, we cross trap path professionally or whatever have you. I'm like, right, I heard about, I, mean, I heard you on just this podcast. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that's happened yet, but I'm, you know, I still, there's still hope. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. I mean, is it, I, I'm a firm believer that things might not pop off off the first one, but once you get when you get over a hundred, like something's going to break, you know, like yeah. you're, like yeah. something's going to happen, and so it, it's just yeah. all about that consistency, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so uh, because you're an animator, yes, yes. So I uh, <laughs> I am because we're in the Corona apocalypse right now. Uh, I'm really <laughs> encouraging people that pretty much everybody that's like stuck in the house to uh, explore something new, you know, like learn a new skill, explore something because you have the time to do so. And so, uh, and so, I'm actually getting into 3D animation, a 3D modeling and animation with uh, this program called Blender. And so I, uh, so I got uh, if you're familiar with like Udemy or Skillshare. Um, mm-hmm. I they had like they have like a whole bunch of deals for stuff like that and you know I'm gonna just you know get those get those courses together and try to get through that in the next couple of weeks and then uh and then uh add that to kind of the tool belt and so uh oh. and so uh, yeah you know a 2D animator uh had a few credits and like I did a documentary and uh well Max Lemonova documentary too so yeah so I have like a couple of credits on IMDb uh uh, sold some stuff to Hulu, uh, got some stuff on Amazon and HBO, and uh, and you know just working on my own sort of like series and, and client work and stuff. And so uh, and so it, it's a uh, you know it like it, it's like one of those things where like you get your first break and then you think like the next break is going to come around the corner and then you're waiting like three or four years. And so, yeah, you're just like, dang, boo, I did this. Come on, I'm in. It's like, no, nah, it doesn't really work like that, you know. But it, it's, I dig it. I dig you know, it. but uh, but what? So what is what is it that you what is it that you do? You know, outside of podcasting. Wow. So I guess in my in my day to day professional life, I manage uh, two different programs that work with youth and families involved with the criminal justice system okay. here in Portland. Um, I work for Portland OIC in the Rosemary Anderson High School, and um, I've been 
before that or most of my time in Portland uh, and before I've worked with youth and families in either education or uh, direct service, crisis intervention, things of that nature for most of my life. Um, uh, and yeah, so, uh, so I do a lot of, uh, you know, fair amount of volunteer work here and there, you know, work being on boards. I'm a member of the Black Male Achievement Steering Committee. Okay. Here in Portland, and uh, you know, just doing around some advocacy efforts for changing the youth outcomes for Black men and boys, and and then you know, outside of that, uh, you know, I have other ambitions of you know, like I said, I used to rap. <laughs> I have the, the, a little bit of you know, other uh, you know, a little bit of stand up, a little bit of other creative stuff. Okay, know, trying to find so a, you, find a way. So you like to be behind the mic. I do like be like being behind the mic. I, I had to accept that, and that's actually been one of the obstacles of the podcast. Is because at some point, at least if you want your podcast to be popular, you have to do some proactive steps to like make people listen to you. <laughs> Which, if you, if you know, I mean, like if you wanted to be popular, you just want to do it and save it for the historical record. Yeah, that's great. But if you're like, I really would like people to listen to this. You got it at some point. So I'm, I've been wrestling with what is the way I can make myself an internet famous person uh, in a way that I feel appropriate. <laughs> and so it's question. still going. I'm in no rush. <laughs> I'm in no rush. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I do what I do for a living, um, and, and I like what I do for a living outside of creating. So I'm not in a, a rush to like become this other entity. Yeah. Uh, but it's something that's a part of the, the deal. I mean, uh, I have a friend... Um, I think we talk about it if you listen to my show with uh, Jordan Theory. Uh, and I think in that show we talk about sort of, because he does um, he makes movies and other things, uh, documentaries. And it's like, well, if you're doing this creative product and you want someone to see it, you kind of got to let them know about agitate it. <laughs> and like make them let them see it. But then it's like, what do I have to do to do that? And it makes, you know, it can get to this kind of weird place where you feel like you're not being who you, re- you really are. Yeah. Because you're trying to get people to look at you, you know, which, you know, so I'm wrestling with yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, that's always for me because I'll, 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 I'll live stream like four or five hours out of the day and all these different <laughs> things and I'm just constantly producing stuff. Um, it does, you have to kind of get, you have to kind of be shameless a little bit, you know, uh, yeah. because at the end of the day, like you, you're creating stuff so that people, have something to do have something to like you know invest in you know whether it's their time whether it's their money uh but understand that they're going to invest that time and their money into something regardless of if it's you or if it's somebody else and so at least they know who's making it and they they can identify with who's making it opposed to just some random person out of you know on the internet you know or in the movie studio and so i i've kind of I've kind of grown more accustomed to just like accepting that as fact. I'm like, well, I thought this was cool. Maybe you'll share it with somebody else and see if they like it. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it's, I think it's, um, I mean, it's oddly enough, it's one of the things, a uh, couple episodes I've talked about sort of the, you know, cause especially for a lot of, like kind of being publicly vulnerable and being visible in a public setting. I mean, on the internet, it can feel anonymous. Yeah. But it is public. Mm-hmm. Like anyone can search it. You know, they, you know, I, I said a life lesson for my children <laughs> about the internet. I, I showed them, I was like, look, go Google your father's name, right? And I was like, now look at all the stuff that pops up, right? You know, I've worked hard. So at this point, you got to get pretty far down the page before something that like comes up with my name. It's, just, it's just something that's like, I don't know what that is. That's, yeah. that's not really me. <laughs> or like, that's a weird picture. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Like, what does that have to do with, with, with these two words? Like, um, and then, and, and I, and I was doing this with them as an idea of like, look, if you, you know, had a, if you wanted to do something on the internet, you wanted to do YouTube blogging or you wanted to do, uh, you know, make beats or that or whatever it is, um, you have an opportunity to be proactive to get like, when someone searches your name, that something cool or interesting that you're into pops up mm-hmm. and it can be, you know, I don't want you to not be. You know, a, a, a rolling criticism I hear about just social media is that it's always people only presenting their good sides, and and, and that there's truth in that. Um, 
but it's also a thing to you can be strategic if you're going to engage on these different platforms and systems around like what do I want to be outside talking about to people? Yeah, you know, and and I, and, I, and I think you can do that without necessarily being like a facade about like his real feelings or something else. Like, <laughs> You know, you know, cause it's, it's certain stuff I, I don't need to tell y'all. <laughs> yeah, like you know, discretion is a but, real thing. You know, yeah. just because you see a nice picture doesn't, you, just because you see a nice picture doesn't mean like you need to know that like you know Joe Blow snores all night. Like it, right. it's just, right. it's just, it's just whatever. You know, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not even right. Like, uh, okay, okay. So, like, are you, are you from Portland? No, I'm actually from I'm from New Jersey. Okay. Originally, I uh, grew up uh, New Jersey. Was born in Trenton. Grew up from Trenton and Wollongboro. Um, I went to college and lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, for about ten years, and then I moved here uh, almost sixteen years ago. And why did uh, you move here? Me and my wife. Well, you know, as I like to say. It's a combination of things, you know, sometimes family and relationships move you places. Uh, and then also, you know, Portland got me with actually quite like this current, uh, this year's spring is quite lovely. Um, <laughs> so we came, my partner's parents moved uh, here from uh, California about a year before we moved here. Um, and we were planning to move to, from Port Cal- from Pennsylvania to California. Uh, and in the midst of uh, trying to find jobs and determine what we're going to do and looking at housing, and we had a, a two-year-old son at the time, we were like, well, let's check out Portland, let's visit, and see how we feel about it. Because my wife, she had come out here a couple times for a conference, something else. So we're like, she was like, well, it seems like it could be cool. And da, da, da. So we come to visit, and it was just like the most glor- gorgeous spring week in you know march in our oregon you know what i mean like the sun was out we went to the coast it was like 65 degrees at the beach <laughs> in lincoln city and you know how to, and you know how lincoln how all those places at the coast it could be super nice yes one day yes and then the next day it's 45 and foggy yes <laughs> but it didn't do that it was just super nice i'm like you know and i'm coming from you know Port- pittsburgh is cold in the winter pittsburgh is very similar to, Pitt- to portland actually in terms of gloominess except it's colder so i'm here i'm like i don't know man this ain't bad i think i can make this work <laughs> and so you know and, and and i was you know just said at, at where i was at in the world i was i just didn't think pittsburgh was the place i needed to be uh at that time and i wasn't trying to go back to new jersey i didn't really have any, you know, I was like, let's try the West Coast, see how it goes. And California was way too expensive. Yes, yes, very <laughs> much so. Even back like, then, even, you know? Yeah, even for somebody that had saved some money, it was like, well, we could go to California, and if we don't find jobs in, a, like, a week, <laughs> so we can get a paycheck <laughs> if I had to pay some sort of rent somewhere, um, I don't know how this is going to work out. You know, uh, you know, in hindsight, I probably... Just looking for the wrong types of jobs in California, but that's not—it's neither here nor there at this point. Um, so we said, "Look, let's go to Oregon. You know, we have grandparents close by. See how it goes for you know a year or whatever, and see what happens." And almost 16 years later, I'm still here. Yep. yep. So, yep. Yeah, and it's a—it's it definitely a good time to yep. be in Portland because you know, like there's there's a lot of things there's a lot of things like happening in this area that. In order to be around all that stuff, you'll probably have to pay a lot more money. You know, yeah. like if you're going to the Bay Area, if you're going to LA, if you if you're living in New York, you know, all these sort of like hubs for at least like content creation and stuff. You know, uh, you would have to be in a, you would be paying like twice as much money. You know, and dealing with twice as much traffic. <laughs> right. And everything else that goes with it, you know, and and it's it's. I mean, I have to tell. I mean, it's a beautiful area. Oregon's a beautiful state. Um, these parts of it, I've gotten to see. Um, you know, for the most part, I mean, I haven't had any uh, critical issues with you know people, 
that have made me, you know, reconsider or think about leaving. But I like to keep, as I tell my friend, I like to keep Oregon under pressure. I tell him, I'll, for right now, I'm good. Yeah. Not leaving. <laughs> but, you know, just take Oregon. Don't get too comfortable, as my son would say. <laughs> Don't get too comfortable. I, mean, I might switch up on you. Um, but, yeah, so that's, so I've been here for quite some time, but I'm not from the city, from the state or the area originally. How about yourself? Uh, nope. Yep. From California. I came up here uh, because of football. You know, I played at, I okay. played at Oregon State. And um, All right. I'm from the Bay Area, so I, w- I went down, when I finished up, I went down to uh, L.A. to finish up this documentary. And then uh, after all my money dried up, I, you know, came, came went up to the Bay Area and was like, well, you know, I like Portland because it gives me sort of like Berkeley Bay vibes, but I don't have to deal with like the prices or, you know, all the extra stuff that right. comes with California. And so I, you know, yeah. kind of just packed up my car. uh got a credit card and, you know, moved up here. <laughs> and, and, All and, uh, I've been, I'm trying to get into OHSU. to shoot. And so, uh, and so that's kind of been sort of like my driving force for, uh, you know, being up here. And then I kind of just stumbled across, the, uh, you know, the, the comic book hub, you know, the comic book animation hub that uh, Portland has, which is very, uh-huh. very, I mean, for me, at least like in, in comics and animation, like this is like LA for me. You know, so it, it's a, uh, so I kind of just lucked into that. Um, and so, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's been a pretty interesting ride so far. Oh, cool. Well, I, I'll save some of those questions for uh, when we reverse roles. <laughs> <laughs> when I get you on my show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> in case you didn't know, you are invited okay. to be a guest. I appreciate it. Podcast. I appreciate I it. it. You know, reframe <laughs> and, and reposition that or interview, you know, you do as the me as the protagonist of the <laughs> yeah. So you can show me how it's really done. <laughs> well, you know, it's no competition. You know what I'm saying? It's all friendly. It's all friendly. Uh, friendly sport. Oh yeah. It's oh, yeah. Like uh, like golf. Yes. Yes. Like golf. <laughs> like you hit the ball, you don't really hit the person. Or <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, to kind of wrap it up, um, you know, what what would you what would you say are like some good uh some good advice for somebody thinking about starting a podcast or, or at least like either you, YouTubing or, or putting their voice out there. I mean, I, th- I think the, I think to take a moment and think about, you know, even maybe with a, a friend or a, somebody that will hear what you got to say and just kind of talk about what it is you want to do. Right. Like you want to, you want to tell stories. Do you want to, uh, share some of your spiritual um, insights. Uh, do you want to take people through a skill that you have, right? So do that, you know, and not long. Don't do that very long. Do that like on a Saturday. Say, hey, man, I'm thinking about doing this. Can you come listen to what I'm thinking about for an hour? And have that person there. Not so much so they could tell you yay or nay, but so you can kind of get over the hump of like, I'm about to tell somebody this thing that I might feel a little reserved about. Yeah. Right. So you can experience in real time because you're not actually going to see how anyone cares, feels about your videos or your movies or your stories. Like unless unless they're emailing you, in, you know, in mass quantity, like I hate what you're saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> your videos stink, which on some level, if 100,000 people email you that your video stinks, I don't know. You might have won anyway. Yeah. Yep. I mean, because <laughs> everybody, 100,000 people saw your yeah, video. Yeah, a view is a view. It don't matter if you got a like right. or dislike. A view is a view, baby. Uh, but the and, and then I would say, man, just fire off and, and go try it. You know what I mean, if, it, if it's going to do if you're going to do the YouTube thing. I mean, like you said earlier, now so much of this you can do totally in your phone. Um, you know, unless you want to, I don't know, you want an orchestra playing in the back or something. <laughs> I don't know. You, you know what I mean? But like for the most part, you can get everything queued up, fired up, you know, with you and your phone walking in the park or sitting at a bench or in your in your bathroom, in the closet. I don't know, wherever. And and start saying what thing, start sharing your story, start sharing the things you want to share, and then see what happens. You know, try a little bit. You know, if you don't like one medium, try another medium. But um, you know, just just go ahead, you know, do that little little two hour Saturday deal, and then just take off. Don't 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 look back. Yeah. And just see what happens. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's nothing to it but to do it. That's that's really what it comes down to. You know, and and always for me, I I've grown. I've grown to accept the fact that like the first thing that you do is always going to suck. Yeah. Like 
it doesn't matter if you're trying to be a writer, just write that first article because it's not going to be that great. But that second, that third, that fourth one will definitely be better if you keep up at it. Absolutely. You know? and so, uh, so, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, with that, you know, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Try to stay safe. Uh, you too. You know, you too. try not to try not to go to Costco anytime in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, I've stayed away from Costco since all of this started. I said I'm not even going to go over there. It's going to be a madhouse. Yes, man. yes. It, 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 you know, you see the convictions of people that on quarantine, being out there right. at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> just waiting in line. Uh, it's like that. Waiting in line. Yep. Got to get, got to get that brown. Got to get them. Uh, the, the brownies, or the, gotta get one of those roast chickens. Yep, yep. <laughs> I don't know what they wait for. <laughs> yep. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Stephen, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, it. definitely, it definitely, definitely. So, yeah, yeah, just hit me up whenever you want me on, and uh, and we'll take it from there. Absolutely. All right. Okay, have a good one. Well, peace. Again, I want to give another shout out to the Soul District Business Association and Flossa Media for helping me put this on. I'm your host, Stephen Christian. I mixed and mastered this podcast. I also did all the interviews. And if you see any of the stuff on YouTube, I put all that stuff together as well. With all the social distancing things right now, I'm producing this right out of my home studio. So if you have a chance, make sure to follow us on Twitter instagram medium at pdx black rose which is pdx b-l-a-c-k-r-o-s-e and if you're on patreon hit us up on there we would love your support if you don't do anything else definitely rate and review us on your favorite podcast platform apple Podcasts, spotify google Podcasts, stitcher and on top of that be sure to share this with your friends The purpose of this podcast is to highlight the movers and shakers in Portland that are doing things in the black community. And by supporting this podcast, you're supporting the community as a whole. So with that being said, thank you for your time, and I'll catch you on the flip side. song is brought to you by andy stokes and the outro song is brought to you by spring gang from epidemic sound